Radomer Roman II. Radomer Roman II, September 23, 1829, May 12, 1863, contested was the son and heir of Queen Ranavalona I and ruled from 1861 to 1863 over the Kingdom of Madagascar, which controlled virtually the entire island. Radoma's rule, although brief, was a pivotal period in the history of the Kingdom of Madagascar. Under the unyielding and often harsh 33-year rule of his mother, Queen Ranavalona I, Madagascar had successfully preserved its cultural and political independence from European colonial designs. Rejecting the Queen's policy of isolationism and persecution of Christians, Radoma Roman II permitted religious freedom and reopened Madagascar to European influence. Under the terms of the Lambert Charter, which Radoma secretly contracted in 1855 with French entrepreneur Joseph Francois Lambert while Rene Valona still ruled, the French were awarded exclusive rights to the exploitation of large tracts of valuable land and other lucrative resources and projects. This agreement, which was later revoked by Prime Minister Rainelay Aravani, was key to establishing France's claim over Madagascar as a protectorate and, in 1896, as a colony. The dramatic contrast between René Valona's isolationism and her son's pro-European stance represented an abrupt reversal of policy that threatened the traditional sociopolitical order. Radoma's absolutism in pursuing dramatic reforms in disregard of the advice of his ministers ultimately turned them against him. In a coup led by his prime minister, Reynavan and Ahitriniani, Radoma Roman II was strangled on May 12, 1863. His wife Rabodo, who took the throne name Raso Harina, was allowed by the ministers to succeed her husband on the condition that she and future sovereigns would no longer rule unilaterally, but rather in concert with the Hova the class of free citizens as represented by the position of prime minister. The public was informed that Radama had committed suicide and that his body had been unceremoniously interred in a tomb in Illify. However, there soon emerged rumors believed by prominent foreigners Jean Laborde and William Ellis that Radama lived and was making plans to reclaim the throne. A strong case has since been made on the basis of significant evidence that Radama may indeed have revived after the strangling and lived to old age in anonymity near Lake Kinkany in the northwestern part of the island. Upbringing and Early Years Radama Roman II was born Prince Rakoto Rakatos Hinandradama on September 23, 1829, in the Imasondro building on the compound of the Rova of Antananarivo. He was officially recognized as the son of King Radama I and his widow Queen Ranavalona I, although the king had died more than nine months before the prince's birth. He was likely fathered by a lover of his mother, Andriami Haja, a progressive young officer of the Marina army, who the queen may have been tricked into putting to death by conservative ministers at court. After his mother succeeded Radama I on the throne, she instituted an increasingly regressive regime that attempted to restore traditional values and contain or eliminate westernization. The prince, however, who had been highly influenced by the French advisor to the queen, Joseph Francois Lambert, was favorably impressed by European culture, knowledge, and its state of economic, political, and technological development, and was troubled by some of the socially repressive policies pursued by René Valona I. According to a British account, the French played on this sympathy in 1855 by pressuring Prince Rakoto into signing a request for French aid that would have enabled France an alternate explanation was offered by Lambert, who maintained that the prince had knowingly supported the attempt to put an end to his mother's harsh policies, and was a willing collaborator in a failed 1857 plot to remove her from the throne. Prior to Queen Ranavalona's death, the conservative and progressive factions 
within the Marina court waged a tactical power struggle to secure a successor favorable to their own political agenda. The conservative faction favored Rambo Salama, the son of the Queen's sister, while the Queen's prime minister, Rainavan and Ahitriniani and head of the army, Rainale Aravani, brothers and progressives, supported Radama Roman II. The latter successfully obtained key strategic allies within the court that enabled Radama to seize the throne without violence following his mother's death. Rambo Salama was obliged to swear a public oath of allegiance to Radama, and was later sent into exile in the highland village of Ambo Himiramo, where he died in April 1862. Reign. Prince Rakoto acceded to the throne on August 16, 1861, upon the natural death of his mother, Queen Ranavalona I, assuming the throne name Radoma Roman II. His coronation ceremony was held the following year on September 23, 1862. Once upon the throne, he immediately initiated a rapid and dramatic reversal of many of his mother's traditionalist policies. He reopened the country to foreign powers and concluded treaties of friendship with Britain and France. The Lambert Charter opened up business possibilities for French investors. Freedom of religion was declared, persecution of Christians ceased, missionaries returned to the island, and their schools were reopened. Radama abolished the traditional trial by ordeal of Tangina, in which the guilt or innocence of an accused person was determined based on the outcome of consuming the poison of the Tangina nut, and inhabitants of Antananarivo were permitted to raise swine within the city walls, a practice previously forbidden by a fady taboo forbidding them from being kept near the royal talisman's sampi. The Sampi were dispersed to the sacred villages where they had originated under 16th century Marina King Relambo and other early monarchs. Significantly, Radoma freed numerous political prisoners captured under Rene Valona I during provincial wars of subjugation and offered repatriation of confiscated property. This pardon was reciprocated by many of the beneficiary ethnic groups around the island and goodwill between the coasts and central administration at Antananarivo improved significantly. These changes, and the king himself, were unequivocally praised by Madagascar's European partners. It is most remarkable that Radama Roman II should have formed views of policy so large and liberal, so enlightened, humane and patriotic as those which formed the foundation of his throne, that the son of such a mother trained up under a despotism so dark and restrictive and cruel. The reaction within Imirina was less one-sided. The abrupt and dramatic policy changes pursued by the progressive king both alienated and disfranchised the established conservative factions among the Andriana nobles and Hova freemen at court. Especially controversial were the special privileges accorded to Joseph Francois Lambert and his partners under the Lambert Charter, including the exclusive implementation of public works projects felling trees, making roads, building canals, etc. Control over minting coinage, lucrative mining rights, and more as part of the purview of Lambert's proposed compagnie to Madagascar French Madagascar Company. The citizens' concern stemmed primarily from clauses in the agreement that would have permitted Lambert's company to become permanent owners of Malagasy lands. Until this point, land in Madagascar, which was viewed by the populace as the sacred ground of the ancestors, could only ever be temporarily possessed by foreigners until their death, at which point the land would revert to the crown. The threat of permanently losing any part of sacred Malagasy soil to foreigners was deeply troubling. Assassination plot. The legalization of dueling was ultimately the issue that brought to a head the tension between King Radama Roman II's entourage, mostly friends and some established political figures, known collectively as the Menomaso or Red Eyes and representatives of the opposition led by Radama's Prime Minister Rainavan and Atriniani. On May 7, 1863, 
Radama Roman II announced his intention to allow disputes to be settled by a duel, much to the disapproval of many of his advisers at court, who feared the practice would lead to anarchy. The Prime Minister prevented the law from being publicly declared at the Zoma Friday market the following day. Friday afternoon, the Prime Minister's younger brother, Reina Learivani, who was head of the army, called several thousand troops into the city to besiege a number of the Menomaso, members of the royal family at the Rova Palace compound, and by Saturday morning the decision had been made and carried out to execute eleven of the Menomaso and other key political figures who had counseled Radama to legalize dueling. On Sunday, May 10, Reina Vananatrinyani demanded that Radama hand over the Menomaso he was sheltering in the palace, which he refused to do until the Prime Minister agreed to spare their lives. They were handed over, but by Monday morning had all been speared to death. The drama ended on Tuesday morning, May 12, 1863, when a group of officers and soldiers forced their way into the Rova and seized the king. His wife, Queen Rabodo, pleaded for his life to be spared and attempted to stop them, but was forcibly removed. The soldiers threw a lamba over Radama's head and strangled him with a silk sash until he was believed to be dead, thereby avoiding the shedding of royal blood, as was the custom for royal executions in Imerina. The nobles informed Rabodo that she would have their support as queen on the condition that she would accept to abide by certain articles that would form a new contract between rulers and ruled in Madagascar. For the future the word of the sovereign alone was not to be law, but that the sovereign, the nobles, and the heads of the people were to unite in making the laws, that the friendship with foreigners was to be maintained, that no one was to be put to death on the word of the sovereign alone, that the nobles and the heads of the people must concur in the sentence before it could be inflicted, that religion and worship were to be equally free to all to natives and foreigners, to Christians and non-Christians excepting in Ambo Himanga where the ordeal of Tangina was not to be used, but death should be inflicted for great crimes. Rabodo agreed to these conditions. The next morning, it was publicly announced in the marketplace that Radama had taken his own life due to grief over the deaths of his compatriots, the Menomaso, and that Rabodo would succeed him as Queen Raso Harina. To cement the new power-sharing agreement between the ruler, the nobles, and the heads of the people, a political marriage was contracted between the Queen and Prime Minister Rainavana Nahatriniani, who had been instrumental in her first husband's death. Radoma's name was struck from the list of kings, and it was declared illegal to mourn his death. Rumors of survival. Following Radoma Roman II's apparent death, French historian Delville presents evidence that supports a scenario wherein the group tasked with carrying Radoma's body to Illify became frightened as the king began to revive, prompting them to abandon the body and then falsely maintain that they had completed their task to place him in the tomb. Within months after his reported death, the rumors persisted to the point of causing political turmoil in Antananarivo. These claims may have had some substance judging by the actions of others. Prominent Christian missionaries outside the capital made extensive efforts to visit and support Radama, but seemingly never succeeded. Traditionalist factions within the government were concerned enough by the rumors to have put to death 16 of his supporters, as well as fining hundreds of others. According to evidence in Delville's study, Radama may indeed have survived and, failing to regain the throne, lived to old age as an ordinary citizen in the north of the island. With the apparent murder of Radama Roman II, the power of the Marina monarchs was broken. Subsequent monarchs were controlled by influential Hova, particularly Reina Learivani, who became prime minister after his brother, and successively married all three remaining queens of the monarchy, Raso Harina, Ranavalona Roman II and Ranavalona Roman III.